Let's continue to read. Next paragraph. Paragraph number 10. Man's capacity to learn replaces the instincts of the animals. Men's instincts have become feeble by comparison with those of animals. Not every infant begins to breathe the moment it is born, and sometimes vigorous action must be taken before a baby will draw its first breath. The same applies to sucking. Many infants have to be encouraged and stimulated before the first drive is aroused that will make them feel the urge and ability to satisfy a vital need. Man has no clear and unmistakable instincts to guide him either in walking or in other movements and not even in sexual activity. His capacity for learning, on the other hand, is incomparably greater than that of any other living creature. The stronger instincts of the animals do not permit them to seize or resist instinctive action and obviously change in an instinctive action is neither easy to achieve nor permanent. Our ability to learn, therefore, which involves the developing of new responses to familiar stimuli as the result of experience, is men's special characteristics. It serves us in place of powerful instincts where even the slightest changes come about only with great difficulty. I love here the definition of learning. That's worth repeating. Our ability to learn, which involves developing of the new responses to familiar stimuli, new response to a familiar stimulus as the result of experience. Basically, how you act, forming new responses, your ability to do it this way, second way, third way, fourth way, as opposed to just one way. I, I love this uh, very specific definition of learning. So obviously this, this chapter deals with our capacity for learning, our incredible capacity to learn. And in some way it's, it requires babies when we were young to spend so much time in developing even the most fundamental functions that other species have at their birth. But what other species cannot do is is developed in, in so many different ways. So that's why when a person is born, we don't, we don't know, we have slightest clue what this person's life will be like. While when a cat is born, you can kind of predict what this cat will be doing in five years, in 10 years, providing that it's alive. So, that's why cats don't fly to the moon or Mars and don't do neural circuitry surgeries or design buildings or become car mechanics or symphony orchestra players. Our capacity to learn, our capacity to develop is something so precious and so unique to us. And therefore, I think he's alluding to also our capacity to change how we move, how we behave, and including our posture, our capacity to influence that. Let's continue to read paragraph number 11. Men learns mainly from experience, animals mainly from the experience of their species. The function of speech will serve as a good example to help us understand our other functions. Every child born without some gross defect has the skeletal, muscular and nervous equipment to allow him to learn to speak through hearing and imitating sounds. The animals with the stronger instincts, on the other hand, have little need to learn. 
their executing mechanisms are linked almost from birth with the ordering mechanism of the nervous system. The connections in the nervous system are predetermined and a minimum of experience is required to impress the function permanently. The nightingale thus sings the same song in Japan and in Mexico. This may not be absolutely scientifically accurate, but it is close enough for our purpose. Bees construct their hives according to the same pattern wherever they happen to live, and every animal in whose veins there is dog's blood will bark, even if it also has a share of wolf or jackal blood. But in men, there is no speech pattern that is fixed from birth. Speech develops and grows anatomically and at the same time functionally. A child will speak Chinese if he grows up in China, or he learns whatever language is appropriate to his surroundings. Wherever he happens to be, he will have to form through his personal experience the connections between the cells of his nervous system that activate the muscles he needs for speech. At first, these cells are provided only with the power to freely establish whatever combination of pattern experience will provide. These patterns created by the individual's experience and not by collective experience of the human race are therefore permanent only as long as the experience is stable. It is even possible to forget one's mother tongue. And it is not very difficult to learn another language. I'm certain that you did not recognize that I wasn't born in America. <laughs> no, but, but uh, truly, it's uh, quite remarkable his, his observation about the difference between humans and animals from the point of our capacity to learn, that we do not have I was not born a fencer and I was not born a physical therapist and Feldenkrais practitioner. Uh, we just, our surroundings, our environment, our influence of positive people steers us through our journey throughout life uh, and it's not fixed. We can develop new hobbies, new interests, new curiosities and conduct our path into the future which is wide open we are not predetermined if this is very to me it's very optimistic because that means that even with past difficulties traumas um, they may have a strong anchor and and pull us and hold us but at the same time this does not mean that I have to continue on the same path throughout my life. For me, it's a very optimistic message, full of hope and full of, of possibilities. Possibilities, but the process is the process of learning, that we need to invest, we need to keep on learning, we need to keep, as long as we are in existence, we keep stimulating our nervous system. We put ourselves into rich environments that stimulate our brains, our muscles, our skeletons uh, to new learning, to new skills. I'm actually curious if what are the differences between species. He's making a claim that um, birds will sing no matter where they are happen to be or dogs will sound the same and cats will walk in exactly the same way. I do not know animal kingdom and their behavior. I'm curious if differences between movements of the same species in different parts of the world. But I, I can picture that uh, in the gross sense Dr. Feldenkrais was quite right that, that their capacity to alter their path is very limited because they rely so much on the reflexive uh, responses of their nervous system rather than learning. Paragraph number 12. Individual experience. But it is the 
early attempts at speech that have the greatest influence on the development of the mouth and on the relative strength of the vocal cords. Every subsequent attempt at learning a new language will be hampered by the early influences and it will be more difficult to become accustomed to the new forms. Learning a new language is also made more difficult by the existing speech forms that impede new combination of movements of the muscles of the mouth and throat. For they have already acquired a tendency to continue the former patterns automatically. So this is something that I have experienced um, in my 33 years now in this, uh, in this country. And, and the story that I often tell my students is, is how in the first year when I came to America and I was coaching fencing, and my fencing students could not believe, and they, they really thought I'm pulling their legs, uh, when, they, when I told them that I don't hear a difference between somebody saying hair and her. At that time, in the first year, to me, those sounds were exactly the same. I could not differentiate between hair and her. And there were a number of other sounds like stump and stump, or cap, cup, cop. All of these, I actually until this day, the, my ability to execute patterns precisely is a little bit shaky. And, and part of it is what he's talking about uh, in this paragraph that uh, because I've learned in one environment where those differences did not exist, we did not have different sounds of the letter O. O was just an O and you couldn't pronounce it in any different way, that it was something that inhibited my, my learning. It's still not impossible. I made a lot of progress and, and this is the... This is the learning, the stimulus, and not only one response, but you have the stimulus, and then you learn to have an alternative, different response that actually recognizes the difference between her and her. Another f thing that impedes is when you get good enough. When I've learned enough of a command of English language that gets me by, this usually stops or slows down the progress. And the same often happens with movement and with our posture. When it just gets good enough, sometimes that's the end of our learning and we need to nudge ourselves and, and find different sort of motivation to keep at it, to keep practicing. I'm curious what your thoughts are and please leave the comments below. And until the next time, thank you very much.